Pay attention. This is the moment the sun was ignited. A surge of energy instantly illuminated the entire sky. How much matter did it absorb to illuminate the entire solar system? Over 4 billion years ago, near the location of the solar system, there was an enormous molecular cloud spanning several light years across. Due to a gravitational collapse at a certain point, the sun was born. It can be said that the sun originated from a molecular cloud. Its central part formed the sun, while the outer regions formed the planets we know today. This is the nebula hypothesis, the current mainstream theory. After hundreds of millions of years, the orbits of the planets around the sun gradually stabilized and on Earth, located in the habitable zone, life emerged, leading to the appearance of humanity. The nebula hypothesis suggests the specific formation process of the sun is under the influence of gravity, nebular material first forms a stellar embryo. This embryo under continuous gravitational forces contracts inward, forming a protostar. The protostar continuously accretes surrounding dust and matter. As its mass steadily increases, its gravitational pull grows stronger. With the aid of immense gravity, the core's temperature and pressure reach a critical point, triggering nuclear fusion of hydrogen, ultimately becoming a star. Throughout this process, the central role always revolves around the Sun, because the Sun's mass accounts for 99.86% of the entire solar system. However, a reality we must acknowledge is, the outer planets we inhabit are merely byproducts formed from the debris released during this process. After the Sun was ignited, it officially entered the main sequence phase. Its entire life cycle will last approximately 13 billion years. Currently, it is in the middle of its life, but its final fate will be to expand into a red giant and then collapse into a white dwarf.